So Sony recently released three lenses, the 11mm 1.8, the 15mm f1.4, and a 10 to 18mm f4. Question though is, are these three lenses in any way actually interesting? Four things in relation to any kind of lens that you would get for a camera that are worth considering. So item number one has to do with uh, stability of the image, right? How stable is the image whenever you're using um, the camera and the glass in front of it. Number two has to do with auto focusing capability. Number three has to do with is size and weight. And number four also has to do with how bright is the lens in totality in with, with regards to how much light is allowed to let in, the f-stop, the aperture, how wide does it open up. Now, I don't have these three lenses specifically, but I do have lenses that are equivalent to that that I've adapted to my Sony ZV-E10. I'm gonna go ahead and start with Sony's kit lens to give you an idea of what typically you're able to get. If I were to use this lens um, or this setup or any one of these lenses in a vlogging, documenting, travel, shenanigans type of set situation, uh, this is how I would do it. So here we are. I actually just uh, finished up a week long uh, production. We're producing a seminar here um, in this uh, hotel conference room. Uh, but if I'm ever uh, I'm vlogging, this is what it would look like. This is your kit lens, 16 to 55 millimeter optically image stabilized lens. Um, I don't know if image stabilization is on, but I don't really care for that much right now because usually whenever I use the camera, I'm typically using uh, catalyst brows. So that answers number one with regards to uh, any lens that I'm going to use with my Sony ZV-E10. Uh, one of the things I want to make sure is that uh, it has, I have the ability to stabilize the image. So in the case of this, this one right now, if I'm ever using optical image stabilization, then I'm not gonna be able to use uh, catalyst brows, which is fine. It always comes down to uh, the end product. What do you have in mind in regard, with regards to how you're gonna produce this? So this is your typical look of the kit lens, right? Uh, with regards to uh, just optically image stabilized. Oh. Um, so here's one of the downsides I don't like about the kit lens. Accidentally, whenever I'm holding it, the way I hold it, especially with my right hand, uh, whenever I do hold it, the I accidentally press the power zoom trigger and I have to zoom back out again. Uh, I essentially would have to go left-handed. With my Canon though, I don't typically have to do this. So autofocus is good. So it checks off all, all of those boxes. The only issue though, that this kit lens, it's not very bright, right? Regardless of which way I turn, the ISO tends to have to run itself pretty high. We're looking at ISO 800 now. It's not big, that big. It's not that big of a problem in this context or this setup because this whole place has been lit up, right? I've got a ton of lights. I got this big V flat over here lighting me. I got this bounce over here with a ring light uh, for this acoustic panel. Uh, I got this uh, big uh, separator up top. I got a couple of color splashes on the walls to give me a little bit of that uh, golden orange sunset hue vibe. So uh, I don't have, oh, and plus I've got some practical lights that are, got the edge lights of the hotel conference room here. I got uh, a couple of these uh, practical lights out in the back that uh, you can see. So uh, this place is full of light yet. Despite the amount of light, the ISO ends up having to uh, be running itself up really high. Um, right now it's at ISO 500, um, 800, 1000, and this is at its brightest setting. Now, what if I want to, you know, run active stabilization? So let me cut recording here, uh, and I turn on active stabilization. Boom, with active stabilization, I get a really smooth image, right? So if I were to walk around like normal, it's not gonna be a very shaky image. This thing is very solid, uh, but it's cropped in, it's real tight, right? A lot of times people are not uh, very comfortable with the camera being real tight. And when you hold this out as long and as far as uh, I'm doing right now, uh, it might, or it will, not it might, it's only a matter of time, it will get tiring. So what if you wanna run active stabilization? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead 
and swap out uh, this lens, the kit lens. I have a Metabones uh, speed booster, which is an adapter. I will get a wider angle whenever I attach a lens because of the glass element inside. But suddenly the size of the whole setup became significantly larger. Is this really big though? For me, in my hands, for my purposes, not really. Uh, in fact, this is a pretty decent, uh, this is just big enough that I can stick it in my bag whenever I'm traveling or going out or having some fun. This is just fine for me. Of the three lenses that Sony released, uh, the first that I wanna talk about is the 10 to 18 uh, millimeter F4. So the uh, most similar thing that I have is Tokina's 11 to 16 millimeter. So similar in, uh, in length, but with the speed booster and the active stabilization, I'll be able to replicate what that looks like. So if you had the 10 to 18 at its widest, it would look something similar to this. It gives you those spaghetti arms, that crazy distortion, especially if you come in real close. If I zoom out, I want to keep myself in focus. That's what it's going to look like. This is great. Oh, let me adjust the, uh, uh, the aperture setting because right now it's at 3.5. Um, let me put this to F4. In regards to the amount of background blur, this is what it would look like. This is right now about 10 millimeters uh, at F4. If you were to get the 10 to 18 F4, at its widest, it would look something similar to this. Let's turn on the stabilization. That same field of view, boom. Now it looks like this, right? Uh, it's a little bit tighter, but it's still pretty wide, right? At 10 millimeters, at four, uh, everything in the background tends to be a little bit more in focus, um, but everything for the most part still looks um, easy. It's gonna be easy to operate. And the upside is if you zoom in on the 10 to 18, this is what it ends up looking like um, in terms of the field of view. It's still pretty wide. You don't put your hands out and everything's gonna be in a decent look. Now, if you were to zoom in all the way, let me see, am I fully in focus there? Now I'm in focus. So if you wanted to go ahead and pull that in to turn on active stabilization, I have active stabilization on right now, but I'm just simulating what it might look like. With active stabilization on, it would probably look something similar like this, so 18 millimeters plus uh, the active stabilization turned on. You're gonna get really tight but you're gonna have the option to have that really tight up close look. And then at the same time, you could just go ahead and simply zoom out, boom, and then come back to something that looks like this. That will always be an option with the 10 to 18 all on one lens without having to swap anything. That's one of the upsides. The only downside is that it's not really bright. Even right now at F4, I'm running this thing at close to ISO, uh, 1600 or 1200 it you know it's changing based on how I position the camera uh, it's a high ISO generally speaking I like to keep the ISO at about 800 or lower on the Sony Z E10 like that in my experience has given me the best image quality so what's the solution to that getting a brighter lens so the other option in Sony's lineup that they have released is the 11 millimeter F 1.8. What would that look like? I'm gonna simulate that look with uh, using another Tokina lens. So this is the Tokina 14 to 20 mil. This is what the 11 millimeter F 1.8 would look like. Let me uh, focus up. Boom, there we go. Now I'm in focus. You'll notice the background's a little bit more blurry, right? It'll give you a little bit of that bokeh, bokehliciousness. It's a brighter lens, that's a plus. It's a prime lens, thus it's a smaller lens, and therefore you're not gonna be able to zoom. But because you have the ability to zoom on the ZV-E10 digitally, honestly, every prime lens is a zoom lens, in my opinion, using this camera. I think the best value of the ZV-E10 is in its ability to have clear image zoom and the uh, active stabilization, which gives you that crop so you could zoom in as necessary. So this is what the 11 millimeter would look like at f1.8. And if you were to turn on active stabilization and focus up, boom, there we go. So now I'm in focus, active stabilization on at 11 millimeters at full arm's length. This is what it ends up uh, looking like, more or less, right? Again, you get a head and shoulder shot. 
not bad. Uh, personally, if I were to pick between these two lenses, the 10 to 18 f4 or the 11 1.8. I would choose the 11 1.8 personally if I had to choose. One of the things that you may want to consider also is the cost that goes into it. Again, we talked about value. What's the value in the lens? It's in its size and weight and portability. It's in its ability to autofocus well. It's in whether or not it has image stabilization and it has to do with how bright the lens is. So for me, because this is a crop sensor lens, I'm gonna prioritize the brightness of a lens, the, the f-stop, the lower the f-stop, the brighter it is, the aperture essentially, the iris, how big can the iris open? I'm gonna prioritize that um, over everything else. Let's look at what does a 15 mil f1.4 look like? This is basically the look of the 15 mil f1.4 at arm's length. This is basically what it would look like. It'll give you a little bit more of a blurry background, but this is without image stabilization. If I turn image stabilization on, now this is active stabilization um, engaged. Now this is the complete head, head and shoulder shot. Um, yeah, this is, uh, it's a tight shot, um, f1.8 actually. Let me make it the proper f1.4 and boom, there we go. Now we're at f1.4. This is what it would look like. Notice how the background is blurry. You've got the frame in the background, right? We've got whatever the environment is. The image is generally really tight. Uh, that's because active stabilization is engaged. Again, if I turn it off, go ahead and active stabilization is now off. Boom, this is what it looks like. Now we get a little bit more of a medium shot, but it's still tight. This is a good talking head lens if you're gonna put this camera on a tripod. 1.4 is also uh, a bit brighter than f1.8. Um, if you could afford to get two lenses, get the 11 millimeter f1.4, I mean f1.8, and the 15 millimeter f1.4. Those two lenses combined, I think, are a great value uh, over the 10 to 18 millimeter f4. However, if you know that you're going to be shooting in situations that are more or less outdoors and during the day with a background environment that you most definitely want to showcase behind you, then get the 10 to 18. The 10 to 18 is an outdoor lens, more or less, and the 11 millimeter and the uh, 15 millimeter f1.8 and f1.4, these are what I would consider your lower light indoor setting or evening nighttime type lens. For me, 90% of the shooting that I do is indoors or in the evenings or at night. So I prioritize brighter lenses. Sony has a Tamron 11 to 20 millimeter f2.8. If I had to choose between that versus the Sony 10 to 18, um, the 11 to 20 millimeter f2.8 would be a good compromise. It, I think it's a good middle ground, but cost. I don't know what the cost is, but uh, I'll put it up here. Again, I'll list these lenses and the prices in terms of what they go for and what their brightness is. So write down the list. This lens here, which is the Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter f2.8. And um, this is how much it would go for today based on prices I've seen on eBay. Then you have the Tokina 11 to 20 millimeter f2.8 um, EF lens. Um, and this is what it goes for probably on eBay or used somewhere. This lens here, which is the Tokina uh, 14 to 20 millimeter F2 lens, right? And I adapted it with the speed booster, makes it a little bit brighter. Um, uh, it brings it down to F1.4. But again, this is an EF lens that I've adapted. This is how much it goes for typically used in the market. Now, if you're looking for uh, lenses that are as versatile as these, in terms of it being zoom and having the adequate brightness, but at the same time you have the benefit of autofocus, consider the Tamron 11 to 20 millimeter f2.8. Now this is how much it goes for. In comparison to the half as bright new Sony 10 to 18 millimeter f4 lens, this is how much it goes for as of right now. Um, this is the new one. There's also an older version of that, um, but there's quality control issues as I've seen um, in the older Sony lenses. So you may want to consider 
the newer one if you're looking for Sony branded lens. Now, when it comes to the 11 millimeter F 1.4, um, or 1.8 actually from uh, Sony, this is how much it goes for. Sony has the 15 millimeter F 1.4, which is the new one that we talked about. And this is how much it goes for. And uh, in comparison to that, there's also the Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4. I believe that might be even a better deal. This is how much it goes for. And between all of these, if you had to just pick one lens with the Sony ZV-E10, personally, I would go for the 11 millimeter F1.8, uh, simply because of its wider field of view and the cropping ability within the Sony ZV-E10 that allows me to do that. Hope you found this of value and of benefit. Let me know if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. I'll see you soon.